Hello first graders, time for the next installment in the A to Z mystery series. We are on to T, which stands for the Talking T-Rex. Let's start. Chapter one. Looks like they're walking pal. Oops. Chapter one. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose hurried toward the high school. It was July 3rd, so they all wore shorts and t-shirts. Josh's dog, Pal, was leading the way with his leash. His floppy ears nearly touched the ground as he sniffed everything in his path. I can't wait to see Judd again, Dink said. Dink's full name was Donald David Duncan, but most people called him Dink. The three kids had met Judd Wheat when they visited his parents' dude ranch in Montana. Remember that one? The ninth nugget when Josh found the gold nugget. Oh, when Josh found a huge gold nugget there, he gave it to Judd to help pay for college. Now Judd was coming to Greenlawn for a visit. I wonder what the big surprise is he mentioned in his postcard, Ruth Rose said. She liked to wear one color. Today it was dark blue from her headband down to her sneakers. The color matched her sharp blue eyes. Read it to us, Josh said to Dink. Dink pulled a postcard from his pocket. He read it out loud as they stopped on Pleasant Street. Hi, Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. I'll be in Greenlawn on July 3rd with a huge surprise. Meet me at the high school grounds at noon. Bye for now, your friend Judd. Maybe the surprise is a large pizza, Josh said. You wish, Ruth Rose said. Look, there's Mr. Pocket, Dink said, turning toward Center Park. Their friend Thaddeus Pocket was standing in the town rose garden. He wore work gloves and held a shovel. His dog Randolph was gazing at the ducks in Swan Pond. Josh dropped the leash and Pal ran over to greet the fluffy little dog. Hi, Mr. Pocket, Ruth Rose said. Well, hello, kiddos, the white-haired man said. All set for the fireworks tomorrow night? I noticed the workers setting up near the swimming pool. We're all going, Josh said. Will you and Randolph be there? I will, Mr. Pocket said, but old Randolph prefers to stay home. He doesn't like the big booms. Pal is staying home, too, Josh said. He doesn't even like birthday candles. Mr. Pocket started digging up a dead-looking rose bush that had no leaves or blossoms on it. In a wheelbarrow was a healthy bush. This one was covered with shiny green leaves. Want to help me plant this new one? Mr. Pocket asked the kids. Dink looked at his watch. Okay, but then we have to meet a friend at the high school. His name is Judd Wheat, and he's studying to become a teacher. He brought a surprise all the way from Montana, Ruth Rose said. This won't take long at all, Mr. Pocket said. He assigned tasks as he removed the old rose bush. Ruth Rose poured a handful of fertilizer into the hole. Dink shoveled in some loose soil. Josh used the garden hose to fill the hole with water. Mother Nature may give us some rain by tonight, Mr. Pocket said, glancing up at the clouds. He lifted the new bush out of the wheelbarrow and placed it in the hole. He made sure the plant stood up straight. That looks splendid, Mr. Pocket said. You three are super gardeners. Dink, if you'll return the wheelbarrow to the shed, I'll fill in the rest of the soil. Dink handed Mr. Pocket the shovel and steered the wheelbarrow over to a garden shed. An old screwdriver held the door closed. Dink opened the door and guided the wheelbarrow inside. There was plenty of room for the wheelbarrow in the packed little shed. The shelves were a jumble of pots, jars, bags of fertilizer, pails, books about gardening, and tools like the ones Dink's parents owned. On the clean brick floor were rakes, shovels, gardening stakes, and coiled hoses. Dink left the wheelbarrow leaning against a stack of empty burlap bags. At the rear of the shed, he replaced the screwdriver and left. Just as Dink reached the others, a red car turned off Main Street and drove toward the high school. Steam escaped from under the car's hood. Is that your friend? Mr. Pocket asked. I hope he didn't drive all the way from Montana in that thing. We'd better go, Dink said. Want to meet Judd, Mr. Pocket? Not right now, Mr. Pocket said. Randolph and I need our lunch and a nap. Thanks for your help. The kids took Pal and ran toward the red car. It stopped and a tall young man got out. He had dark curly hair and broad shoulders. He was wearing a t-shirt, cut off jeans, and red high top sneakers. That's not Judd, Dink said as they approached the man. Oh no, it's not Judd there. Then who is it? The chapter picture, by the way is a T-Rex. That looks scary. And the corner picture are some pretty little fireworks. Chapter two. The man turned and waved. Hi, you must be Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. I'm Scoop Raker. I work with Judd and his friend Dean. They should be here any minute. Scoop raised the hood of his car and more steam billowed out. He took a jug of water from the front seat, then unscrewed the radiator cap. Suddenly he yelled and stuck his finger in his mouth. You'd think I'd learn by now, Scoop said, shaking his head. He pulled a band-aid from his pocket, removed the covering, and wrapped the green band-aid around his finger. Just then, a long flatbed truck pulled up alongside Scoop's car. A brown tarp covered the truck bed, concealing something big and lumpy. The whole thing was tied down with ropes. The driver's door opened and a tall, lanky guy hopped to the ground. He was wearing jeans, a short-sleeved t-shirt, and a cowboy hat. Howdy, the man said, beaming at Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. Hi, Judd, they all said at once. A man stepped out of the passenger side of the truck. He was short and wiry and had black hair tied in a ponytail. He wore work boots, baggy shorts, and a flannel shirt with the sleeves ripped off. 
Guys, I'd like you to meet my roommate and best friend, Dean Whitefeather, Judd said. Dean, this is Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. There's that big truck. I wonder if you can guess what's underneath that tarp. You probably can, based on the title of the book. So we've got three people, Judd, which we already know, and then this must be Dean, and then this is Scoop, who burned his finger and put a Band-Aid on. Um, Dean walked around the truck and toward the kids. He had a friendly smile and dark eyes. His shirt pocket was filled with pens. A ring of keys on his belt jingled when he walked. The kids shook hands with, Dink, with Dean. Then Judd and Dean made a fuss over Pal, who both gave them wet kisses. Well, what do we say we get busy, Dean said, glancing at the sky. Rain by midnight, I'll bet. He started untying the ropes. Scoop climbed back into the car. I passed the hotel on the way in, he said. I'll go check in our room. He drove away with only a little steam escaping from under the hood. Can we help? Ruth Rose asked. Dean smiled at her. My three favorite words, he said. You guys can coil these ropes as we untie them, Judd said. Just lay them on the ground. Josh told Pal to stay and the kids pitched in. After a few minutes, the ropes had all been removed. Dean and Judd yanked the tarp to the ground. When Dink saw what he had made all, what had made all those lumps, he jumped back. He was staring right at the head of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I bet you guys guessed that. Meet Tyrone the Tyrannosaurus, laughed Judd. He looks even better when he's not in pieces. Dink gulped. Where'd you get it, he asked. We bought him, Judd said. Josh grinned. From a dinosaur store, he joked. No, from the man who built Tyrone, Dean said. He planned to start a dinosaur theme park, but he lost interest. He put an ad in the paper, and we saw it and bought Tyrone and the truck. Um, why do you need a dinosaur, Ruth Rose asked. Great question. To raise money, Judd said. Dean and I want to teach kids about the dinosaurs that used to live in Montana. We've decided to build a little museum on a piece of land behind the dude ranch. And Tyrone will be the star attraction, Dean added. When we first saw Tyrone, he was in the guy's barn all in pieces like you see him now. I developed a computer program to make him move and talk. We make money by taking him around the country and collecting donations. Is Scoop a teacher too? Asked Dink. No, we met Scoop in Wyoming. He was looking for work, so we hired him, Judd said. He's in charge of hotel rooms, getting permission for us to set up outside schools, making the flyers, stuff like that. Scoop wants to work at the museum once it's built. Dean climbed up into the truck bed. Let's put this guy back together, Judd, he said. How do you put him together, Dink asked. Easy, like building a model with an erector set, Dean said. He pointed to a, bu a box of large bolts and cables in the truck bed. Why, what's Tyrone made of, Ruth Rose asked. Is he heavy? Not really, Judd said. He took the Tyrannosaurus tail from Dean and laid it on, gently on the ground. Tyrone's mostly fiberglass and rubber. His bones are aluminum. The teeth, toenails, and eyes are plastic. The kids gently touched one of the six-inch long teeth. It looks so real, Josh said. Careful, some of those edges are sharp, Dean said. He grinned and wiggled a finger that was wrapped in a green band-aid. They all looked over when Scoop's red car zoomed up. Scoop parked the car and climbed out with a stack of papers in his hand. How'd you kids like to help out, he asked. Can you take these flyers around town? Scoop handed the flyers to Ruth Rose. She looked at one. Beneath was a picture of a Tyrannosaurus where the words, Come meet Tyrone the Talking Tyrannosaurus behind the high school July 4th at noon. One dollar donation per customer requested. You three will get in free, of course, Judd said, looking over Ruth Rose's shoulder. Cool, Josh said. Who should we give them to? Dink asked. Anyone and everyone, Scoop said. Stores, friends, anyone who likes dinosaurs. Ruth Rose divided the stack of flyers into three smaller piles. They each took a pile. Will you guys watch Pal? Josh asked. No problem, Scoop said. The kids headed toward Main Street with their flyers. An hour later, the kids were back. The whole town is coming to see Tyrone tomorrow, Dink said. Excellent. So what do you think of him now? Judd asked, pointing to Tyrone. Tyrone stood balanced on his thick rear legs and tail. His body and tail stretched out longer than a school bus, and he was nearly as tall as Dink's house. His back feet were as long as Pal, who was sniffing a giant plastic toenail. It's, it's, Dink couldn't find the right words. Judd and Dean laughed. Tyrone isn't full size, Dean said. An adult T-Rex would be even bigger. Come on, I'll show you what's inside this guy's belly. He unclipped his keys and inserted one of them into a little hole in Tyrone's side. When Dean turned the key, a small metal ring popped out. Dink... Dean pulled on the ring, and a door swung open on its hinges. There's Tyrone the Tyrannosaurus, and he has a door in his belly. wonder what's in this guy's tummy. Awesome, Josh said. It was totally hidden. Dean picked up a rubber wedge from inside and used it to hold the door open. Then he reached through the doorway and pulled down a set of folded hinged steps. Have a look, he said. The kids kneeled on the stairs and peered inside the dinosaur's belly. Aluminum bars supported the walls. A row of hooks held tools and coils of rope and wire. There were no windows and it was hot inside. 
The floor was partly covered by a piece of carpet. A laptop computer sat on a small table in the middle of the carpet. A bunch of gray computer cables snaked across the floor. A few of the cables climbed up the dinosaur's chest and disappeared inside its neck and head. The computer does everything, Dean said. It can move Ty Tyrone's tail, mouth, and front feet just by clicking the mouse. He squeezed by the kids and stepped inside Tyrone's belly. I put a loudspeaker in Tyrone's head, Dean explained. He showed them a small microphone. I speak into this and it sounds like the voice is coming from Tyrone's mouth. Can you make him talk now? Josh asked. That'll have to wait till tomorrow, Dean said. We've been on the road since about five this morning and I'm pretty wiped. I need about 10 hours of sleep. Same. Dean and the kids climbed out of Tyrone's belly and he closed the door. Are you guys staying at the Shangri-La? Ruth Rose asked. Judd and Scoop are, Dean said. I'm going to bed down right here. He pulled a sleeping bag from inside the truck and dropped it to the ground. Why do you sleep outside? Dink asked. Dean grinned. Those two snore, he said, gesturing towards Scoop and Judd. Besides, I like sleeping under the stars. Plus, I guide ty guard Tyrone. In the morning, I'll go to the hotel and use their shower. Where can we get some good burgers, Scoop asked the kids. And breakfast tomorrow. Ellie's Diner, all three kids said. Ruth Rose pointed toward Main Street. It's between the pet shop and the fitness center, she said. Thanks for your help. We'll see you tomorrow, Judd said. The three men climbed into the red car and Scoop drove off toward Main Street. A rumble of thunder over their heads sent the kids running for home. That's the other chapter. There's a thunderstorm now. Chapter three. Thunder woke Dink during the night. He lay snugly in bed watching the storm through the window. As lightning flashed, she thought about Tyrone standing out there in the dark and rain. The next day, Dink got to the high school around 11.30. He gazed at Tyrone. The dinosaur was tall and silent under a blue sky. His mouth was closed and his eyes stared into the distance. The grass was still wet from the storm and mist rose as it dried in the sun. Judd, Dean, and Scoop were nowhere in sight. Dink walked over to the truck and looked in the window. Dean's sleeping bag was spread across the seats. A few minutes later, Ruth Rose showed up with her little brother, Nate. She was dressed in orange from her headband down to her socks and sneakers. When, Tyrone, when Nate saw Tyrone, his mouth fell open. He walked over to one of the rear legs and touched it. It feels like a rubber dinosaur toy, he said. Josh and his brothers, Brian and Bradley, came looping across the playing field. Pal was tugging on his leash. The twins stopped in their tracks. It's a tankosaurus, Brian yelled. No, it's not, Bradley argued. It's a trainosaurus. Josh laughed. Guys, it's a tyrannosaurus. It's not real, is it, Josh? asked Bradley. Josh let Pal off his leash. No, he said. It's just a big action figure. Scoop pulled up in his red car and parked next to Tyrone. He hopped out and walked over to the kids. Morning, he said. Some storm last night, huh? The thunder nearly knocked us out of our beds. Scoop sat on the ground and pulled out a pair of sandals. His wet sneakers were tied together, hanging from the car's antenna. Dean and Judd came walking through Center Park. Hi, kids, Judd said. Scoop, you missed a great breakfast. That Ellie makes amazing waffles. Scoop nodded. I couldn't seem to wake up, he said. Judd looked at Nate, Brian, and Bradley. Do you guys like dinosaurs? All three little kids beamed and nodded. T-Rex is my favorite, Nate said. People from town began arriving and stood around gaping at, up at Tyrone. Dink waved to Mr. Paskey from the book nook. He saw Mr. and Mrs. Spivitz, who owned the Shangri-La Hotel. Dink saw his mom show up with Josh and Ruth Rose's mothers. Josh's mom carried a picnic basket. Guys, go sit with mom, okay? Josh asked the twins. Can we take pal? Brian asked. Josh handed the leash over to, leash over to Brian. Okay, but don't let him off. And take him home when mom leaves, okay? Why does Brian get to do everything? Bradley whined. Josh sighed. You two can share the leash, okay? Nate, Brian, and Bradley led Pal toward their mothers. This is great, Judd said, watching the crowd increase. Dean, why don't you get Tyrone ready while Scoop and I collect money? While the kids were picking a place to sit, Dink saw more people he knew from town. A bunch of the O'Leary kids showed up, and Dink waved at them. Some people brought chairs or blankets to sit on. The high school playing field was filling up. Judd and Scoop passed through the crowd, collecting a dollar from each person. When their hands were filled with bills, the men walked over to the truck and locked the money inside the cab. They each did this two or three times. They must make a lot of money, Judd, Josh said. I'll bet there are 200 people here. Judd climbed up the truck bed with a cordless microphone. Thanks for coming, folks, he said to the crowd. When everyone was quiet, Judd went on to explain why they were raising money. Our museum should be built by next summer, and I hope some of you will come for a visit, he said. Judd pointed his mic at the dinosaur. Now I'd like you all to meet my friend Tyrone. Tyrone, why don't you tell these good folks something about yourself, he said. Nothing happened. Tyrone stood silent and still. He didn't say a word. I guess Tyrone is shy this morning, Judd said. Then, in a louder voice, he said, Tyrone, can you say hi to all our friends out here? Wiggle your tail if you hear me. This got a few laughs, but Tyrone still didn't move. Some of the kids in the audience began to fidget. A boy sitting behind Dink wondered, I wonder, muttered, I wonder if we can get our money back. Then, suddenly, Tyrone's tail moved to the right, then to the left. His small front arms waved up and down. His mouth opened, and Tyrone said, Hi, in a deep voice. Hi, Tyrone, the crowd yelled back. 
How many of you know what kind of dinosaur I am? Tyrone asked. Dink recognized Dean's voice coming from Tyrone's mouth. Every kid and adult raised a hand. Tyrannosaurus, Nate hollered. That's right, I'm a Tyrannosaurus Rex, Tyrone said. Now, how many of you remember to eat a good breakfast this morning? Most people raised a hand. Well, Tyrone said, nodding his massive head. About 70 million years ago, I ate other dinosaurs for my breakfast. There he is. There's the crowd watching, and there's Judd with a microphone. That would be a cool thing to see. Everyone laughed. Judd hopped off the truck and sat with Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. Dean's good with the crowd, isn't he? Judd said. You'd swear Tyrone is really talking, Dink said. Josh nodded. Judd nodded, sorry. Yeah, Dean's a genius with anything mechanical. He had me scared at the beginning, though. I thought something went wrong with the computer. Tyrone told the audience all about the dinosaurs who once roamed North America. He talked about what they ate, how they protected themselves, and how they raised their young. The show lasted about half an hour. I hope you'll all go to the library and learn more about dinosaurs, Tyrone said, waving goodbye with his small arms. And come visit me next summer in Montana. A lot of the kids yelled, bye Tyrone, as people began to leave. That was so cool, Josh told Judd. How many schools have you gone to so far? Judd scratched his head. Gosh, I don't really know, maybe 50 or so. Scoop keeps track of all that. I think he's lined up about 20 more before we head back to Montana. Dean climbed out of Tyrone and walked over to where the kids and Judd were sitting. That was great, Judd told Dean. But what happened at the beginning? Dean shrugged. I couldn't get the laptop to boot up, he said. One of the cables was loose. Well, at least you fixed it, Judd said, standing up. It's getting warm, he added. I could use some ice cream. After we clean up, why don't we meet at Ellie's? Tyrone's a Tyrone is treating. You just made Josh happy, Ruth Rose said. What can we do? Judd pulled a plastic bag from his pocket. If you'll go around and pick up the paper, that would be great, he said. While Judd rocked toward the truck, Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose spread out and began collecting litter. Dink was leaning over to grab a crumpled file flyer when he heard a shout. He looked up. The yell had come from near Tyrone. Judd, Dean, and Scoop were huddled in front of the open door. Even from a hundred feet away, Dink could hear Judd yelling, I don't believe it. Don't believe what? What happened? Let's find out. Chapter four. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose ran toward Tyrone. What happened? Dink asked. That's just what I was wondering. Our money got stolen. That's what happened, Scoop said. The money you just collected? Josh asked. Judd shook his head. No, I still have that. He held up two thick stacks of bills with rubber bands around them. I was going to add it to the rest of the money, but it's gone. Dean pointed to the floor inside Tyrone's belly. The table, chair, and carpet had been moved. Where the table and chair stood was a square hole cut into the flooring. A hinge door was open, revealing a compartment. It was empty. That must be where they were storing their money. I built it as a hiding place, Dean said. That's where we kept the money in a duffel bag. We've been putting it in there since we left Montana. How much money was there? Judd asked. Josh asked. Judd's face was white. All the money we've made so far, he said in a shaky voice. Almost $5,000. Six pairs of eyes stared into the empty compartment. I don't see when anyone would have gotten in there, Scoop said. Judd closed his eyes for a second. I put the duffel bag in there yesterday, he said, after we got Tyrone all set up. So someone stole it between yesterday afternoon and this morning, Dean said. And it couldn't have happened last night because I slept out here. I'm going to get Officer Fallon, Ruth Rose said. He's the chief of police. What can he do now, Judd asked. The money is long gone. Officer Fallon catches a lot of crooks, Dink said. Josh glanced down at the ground, dry now from the sun. He might find some clues around here. They're right about bringing the police in, Judd, Dean said. We have to do everything we can to find our money. I'll be right back, Ruth Rose said as she took off running. Well, no one's getting this money, Judd said. He opened his shirt and stuffed the bills inside. Dink felt Josh pincing his arm. When Dink looked at him, Josh motioned with his head for Dink to walk away with him. He followed Josh away from the three men. I hate to say this, Josh whispered, but I think one of them stole the money. He tipped his chin toward Judd, Dean, and Scoop. Why would they do it? Dink asked. Judd and Dean really want to build the museum, and Scoop's going to work there. They wouldn't steal their own money, Josh. But who else has a key to the door or knows about that hiding place inside Tyrone? Josh insisted. Dink shook his head. He kicked a small stone. No one can make me believe Judd would do such a rotten thing, he said. Just then, Ruth Rose and Officer Fallon came hurrying across Center Park. Dink and Josh walked back to, with the dinosaur. Officer Fallon introduced himself and pulled his notebook and pen from his shirt pocket. Ruth Rose told me what happened, he said. He looked at the three men. May I have your names, please? He wrote down each name. Scoop? He asked. Is that a nickname? Scoop grinned. Yeah, I was the editor of my college newspaper. I got the name because I was always first with a new scoop. My real name is Michael Raker. Officer Fallon wrote it down. Can you show me where the money was when you fellows last saw it? Dean pointed through the door at the empty compartment. It was in there, except when we were on the road. Then we kept it with us in the truck. 
I put the duffel bag inside that compartment yesterday afternoon, Jed said. That's the last time I saw it. Wouldn't it be safer to keep your money in a bank? Officer Fallon asked. We thought the money was safe inside the dinosaur, Judd said. No one but us knew about the hidden compartment, and I was planning on taking the money back to my bank in Montana. Was that compartment locked? The police chief asked, writing in his notebook. Judd shook his head. No, but we always keep the outer door locked. Officer Fallon examined the keyhole. He removed the rubber wedge and swung the door back and forth on its hinges. Who has keys to this door? I have one, Dean said. He tapped his key ring. Judd held up his keys. And I have the only other key, he said. Officer Fallon made another note in his pad. So, Mr. Wee put the money in the compartment yesterday afternoon, he said. Then this morning after the show, Mr. Whitefeller looked for the money and discovered that it was gone. Is that correct? Actually, no, Dean said. I did the show, but it was Judd who found out the money was missing. Could the money have been stolen last night, Officer Fallon said. Where'd you fell asleep? Scoop and I slept at the hotel, Judd said. We left the money in the compartment. We always do. Dean sleeps outside. He likes to guard Tyrone. Officer Fallon looked confused. Who's Tyrone, he asked. That's what we call the dinosaur, Scoop explained. Officer Fallon glanced at Dean. You slept out here all night? He asked, even during the rain? Dean smiled. No, when it started to rain, I took my sleeping bag into the truck. Officer Fallon made more notes on his pad, then turned to Judd. Could anyone have snuck into your room and taken your key while you slept? He asked. Judd shook his head. The door was locked. Officer Fallon looked at Dean. How about your key, Mr. Whitefeather? He asked. Where was it while you slept out here? Dean held up his key ring, clipped to my belt inside my sleeping bag with me. Officer Fallon swung the door wide and looked at the computer. Who makes this thing work, he asked. I do, Dean said, and my computer. So as far as you knew, the duffel bag was still hidden under the floor this morning, Officer Fallon stated. That's right, said Dean. Officer Fallon peered inside Tyrone. And you would have been sitting right over the money at your computer, right, Mr. Whitefeather? Dean nodded. But I figured it was already stolen by then, he said. After the show, when Judd moved the table and pulled the rug back, the duffel bag was gone. Officer Fallon placed a wedge so that the door remained slightly open. He looked at the three men. Gentlemen, let's walk across the street to my office. I'd like you to think about everything that's happened since you pulled in here yesterday. I want you to write it all down, even the tiniest details, no matter how unimportant they seem. How long will that take, take Scoop asked. We have a lot of other schools to get to. We're supposed to be in New Haven tomorrow. Then we best get busy, Officer Fallon said. So all of the evidence seems to point to these three. They're the only two, only two of them had keys. And who else would know about that hidden compartment? That's sort of weird. Chapter 5. We'll read one more in this video. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose watched the men follow Officer Fallon toward the police station. Above their heads, Tyrone's big plastic eyes stared. This is great, Dink rumbled. Judd comes to see us and his money gets stolen. I just don't see how anyone did it, Ruth Rose said. We were all here yesterday afternoon and Dean guarded Tyrone last night. Plus, he was locked inside Tyrone during the show. So maybe Dean is the thief, Josh said. He could have taken the money last night or even during the show. No one saw what he did after that door closed. But we know what he did, Dink said. He was working on the computer. Otherwise, Tyrone wouldn't have moved or talked. That's just it, Ty Josh said. Tyrone didn't move for the first few minutes, remember? Maybe that's when Dean was snitching the duffel bag. Dink shook his head. I don't believe Dean would steal from his best friend, he said. Just then, Officer Keene pulled up in his cruiser. He climbed out with a roll of yellow tape and several wooden stakes in his arms. Hi, kids, he said. Little excitement, huh? He set the tape and stakes on the ground and walked over to Tyrone. The wedge was still in place, letting him open the door wider. He glanced inside. Whew, you could bake a pie in there, he said. Officer Keene began shoving stakes into the ground around Tyrone. Then he strung crime scene tape around the stakes, forming a big circle around the dinosaur. It's a crime scene now. Can we go to Ellie's, Josh said. It's not surprising. My brain needs a drink. The kids started walking across Center Park. Do you really think Dean is the robber? Ruth Rose asked Josh. Yes, he said. He has a key and he knew where the money was hidden. What about Scoop? Ruth Rose said. Could he have borrowed a key from Dean or Judd? If he had, they would have mentioned it to Officer Fallon, Ruth Josh responded. Maybe the thief was someone else, Dink said. Some stranger who knew how to pick locks. But Dean was sleeping outside the dinosaur, Ruth Rose said. How would the thief get past him? That's why I think it's Dean, Josh said as he pulled open the door to Ellie's diner. The kids slid into a booth near the windows. One of the Tyrone flyers was taped to the glass. Ellie waved, then came over. Hi, kids. Why aren't you at the dinosaur show? She asked. It's over, Josh said. But someone stole their money. Ellie slid in next to Josh. Who stole whose money? She asked with wide eyes. Ruth Rose explained about the money that was kept inside Tyrone's belly. Those poor guys, Ellie said, standing up. They were so excited when they came in for breakfast this morning. Officer Fallon is on the case, Ruth Rose said. Good, Ellie said. Josh, your tongue is almost hanging out. How about some fresh lemonade? She asked. The kids agreed, and Ellie brought three tall glasses. Josh took a big slurp through a straw. So, you guys agree that Dean is the robber? Dink stirred his lemonade. 
I don't. Dean wouldn't be dumb enough to steal money while he was guarding it last night, he said. That would point the finger right at him. Josh shook his head. He could have taken the duffel bag during the show, he said. How? Ruth Rose asked. Easy, Josh said. He locks himself inside Tyrone. He moves the table and rug, grabs the duffel bag, and puts the rug and table back. It only takes him a minute. Then what? Dink asked. Where did he put the duffel bag? He and Ruth Rose stared at Josh, waiting for an answer. Josh blinked at them. He took a sip of his lemonade. Okay, here's what happened, he said. Dean told us he built that little compartment inside Tyrone, right? So what if he built a second one that only he knows about, and that's where he hid the money? Dink looked at Josh over his glass. You think the money is still inside Tyrone? Why not? Josh asked. It's perfect. No one would think to look for it there. Ruth Rose squinted her eyes at Josh. Except someone with a sneaky mind like yours. I say we go search old Tyrone for the T-Rex, Josh said, finishing his lemonade. If I'm right, Dean is planning to come and get the duffel bag as soon as he gets a chance. I hate to admit it, but Josh is making sense, Ruth Rose said. It wouldn't hurt to look inside Tyrone. The kids left their money on the table, waved at Ellie, and headed back toward the high school. A few minutes later, the kids stood looking at Tyrone, surrounded by yellow crime scene tape. Officer Keene was gone. No one's supposed to go past the tape, Dink said. We could have, we could say we didn't see it, Josh suggested. Right, Dink said. It's broad daylight and we can't see bright yellow tape. But what if it's dark, Ruth Rose said, looking at Dink. We could come back tonight. Dink shook his head. Forget it, guys. We'll be at the fireworks with our parents tonight. Josh draped an arm around Dink's shoulder. Perfect, he said. While they're looking up at the sky, we can sneak away. Dink finally agreed. But I'm only doing this for Judd, he said. The kids heard a bark and saw Mr. Pocket and Randolph inspecting the rosebush in the park. They walked over to say hi. Did you hear about the robbery? Ruth Rose asked. Yeah, and I feel bad for those young men, Mr. Pocket said. Any news? Dink shook his head. But something might break tonight, Josh said, giving Dink a little nudge. Our bush looks fine, Mr. Pocket said, but I have to get rid of this dead one. Dink, do you want to get the wheelbarrow for me? Dink ran to the shed. The wheelbarrow was where he had left it, leaning on the burlap bags. As Dink was leaving, he noticed muddy footprints on the bricks. He brought the wheelbarrow to Mr. Pocket. Thanks, Mr. Pocket said as he loaded the dead rose bush into the wheelbarrow. I'll toss this into the school dumpster. He walked away with Randolph galloping along beside the wheelbarrow. Look, there's Judd and Scoop, Josh said, pointing toward the dinosaur. The two men were standing outside the crime scene tape. Judd was talking and pointing a finger at the door in Tyrone's side. Scoop answered him, shaking his head. The kids were too far away to hear their words. After a moment, the two men climbed into Scoop's car and drove away. Dean wasn't with them. Officer Fallon must be holding Dean as a suspect, Dink said. The sweet lemonade in his stomach suddenly felt sour. And that's the end of that chapter. So, it seems like we have three suspects. Judd, Dean, and Scoop. Very tricky. wonder if you have any theories about which one of the three stole the money and maybe where the money is hidden. We have two mysteries we have to solve. But... That'll be it for now. Be back to finish it another day.